want to give you guys a run through on my vacuum forming machine I've been working on for a while now. We've got a uh, Click PLC down there that's running all the I.O. I have two extra relay output cards, 24 volt power supply. Uh, we've got eight breakers in there. Um, there's room for a ninth one for the vacuum pump that's still coming in the mail. Um, we've got eight or nine solid state relays uh, all of this stuff came or, or most of it originally came from automationdirect.com uh, but I bought it all on eBay for dirt cheap uh, the guy must have been assembling a warehouse or something I don't know um, but so it'll be run off of 240 volts I've got a 60 amp breaker in there right now it's all running off just 110 volts so the uh, heater coils up there, they'll turn on, but they won't actually glow red, so you won't be able to see them. But we've got an e-stop switch here. So you pull the e-stop out, and I'll have labels on all these switches and lights, what they do once it gets to that point, but right now I don't. Uh, you pull that out, this is your e-stop reset. Turns off your e-stop light and pulls in your, con let's see, your contactor down here. Uh, that's what connects half of the 240 to your coils up there. Uh, the blue light blinking just means everything is ready to go. So the blue light is your cycle start button. Green light here is for your vacuum pump. You press it, it'll turn on your vacuum pump. You press it again, it can turn it off. Um, I might also control the vacuum pump depending on the level of vacuum in the tank. And that'll be under here. Um, but I haven't gotten that to that point yet. Um, so right now... We have the uh, sheet holder is in the upward up position. Up here we've got two red lights, one here and one over there. This one in the center is a beeper, and I'll show you what that does. Yellow button over here is for the vacuum solenoid, and that's the one inch solenoid right there you can see hanging down. It's uh, obviously not set up. We've got uh, the button on here. This button does not go through the PLC though the control for the solenoid does. So I can push the button here and that turns on the light and pulls in the solenoid just in case there's something that's gone wrong with the PLC then I can manually turn on the vacuum. Um, so we've got two, let's look over here we have a proximity switch, let's see if I can show you both of them got two proximity switches here uh, let's see this one here is for when it's in the lowered position this one let's see that one there is for when it's in the raised position you can see that it's red down there meaning that it is actually in the raised position so when when you lower this that bar rolls over to the back side and hits the rear proximity sensor. So this is essentially the position you'll start in. Um, so it's blinking saying it's ready to go. When you press cycle start it'll flash quickly. That'll just tell you that hey we're not actually armed because we're in the lower position. If it were to actually arm it would immediately turn on your vacuum solenoid. So you've got it armed. As soon as you raise it, it turns solid meaning it is armed. You raise it to to the upper position that beeps three times now all the heater coils are actually on but they're not gonna glow red because I've only got 110 volts so that'll take I don't know five minutes or something for to heat up the ABS and these two red lights up here will turn on when the heaters are on I just haven't uh, gotten that far in the programming yet so okay we've uh, you know heated up and plastics ready you lower it, and then as soon as it lowers, your vacuum solenoid turns on, and then I've got this set on a timer, which right now is only six seconds just for proofing the programming, but that'll, once I'm forming, I'll know what that should be, but around 60 seconds or something, I'm, I'm not sure, just so I don't waste all my vacuum needlessly. And then we go back to blinking slowly, telling you that the cycle is finished, and you can go again. So your vacuum pump, typically would just stay on this whole time. Um, so let's raise this up. There's green lights. So the top green light right there 
is for the vacuum pump. Oh. <laughs> Let me see if I can get these out of the way. This will all be uh, beautified a little bit once I get the spiral wrap in the mail. Yeah, whatever. So, top SSR there goes to the vacuum pump, which isn't actually connected to anything. Because I'm still waiting on that breaker. But, so we arm, arm the cycle, and then as we go up, it'll beep. And there you see all the lights for all the individual coils turning on. So, top one there, vacuum pump. Now this switch here will decide between when it's straight up, that'll be a four foot forming platen. If I move it to the right, that'll be a two foot forming platen. And then all of the, uh, the four outer relays shut off. So yeah, I can click back and forth. There's for a four foot, there's for a two foot, just for the four center heating coils. Um, I'm not sure if I'll ever make a three foot forming platen, but I have the capability if I want to, to set it to a three foot. It's just, it's not wired in yet, so it doesn't do anything. Uh, we got individual breakers on each and every coil, so if I need to, I can turn them all off, even though the SSR stays on. Um, you got your contactor down there, which if I hit the e-stop up here, then that contactor drops out. My red e-stop light turns back on, and then nothing. Oh, well, there we go. I just found a bug in the program. Got to fix that, because that's not supposed to do anything. Um, but you pull that out. You're supposed to start that. Yep, I got to fix that. Well, there you go. That's why you uh, proof things. But, so that's what we've got. I'm waiting on some 6.4 uh, SO cord in the mail. Uh, so that I can have, right now, I had it set up using a uh, 6.3 on essentially a dryer plug, and that's the outlet that I have wired in over there. But once I started wiring it, I uh, realized that I made the stupid mistake. If some of my circuits run on 110 volts, I need to have a separately, um, a separately isolated neutral from the ground wire. So I have to have four wires instead of three. So I'm gonna have to pull another neutral wire in, but that's not a big deal, just a little bit of time. But that's what we've got so far. Um, here's a look at what we've got up there for the heater coils. One side is all connected to the same. And these ones each have, let's see if I can, I can't really see what I'm doing. These ha each have individual wires controlling them. But um, there's the base for it right there that'll be going in there. But we're getting a lot closer. Let me know if you have any other questions.